So here we are in our little village of Hulua Loa, and this is Ipuhale, and this is the shop of my friend, the gourd decorator. His name is Mike. We'll be learning a little bit about his interesting job and how he found his way into this job. So this is the beginning of the workday for my friend Mike Harbour, and he's in loading gourds from his truck. Uh, Mike, did you grow those? Uh, yeah. It's like an Easter egg hunt to, to find gourds. And yeah. And tromp through here, and you just found one, you say? Yeah, I found one right here. Not ready. Not ready. And then I saw one more. Here? Yeah, there. Not ready. You want them to be pretty big and uh, deeper green? I want the stem to I want the stem to start to turn brown before you harvest a gourd. The way it works is you use a green gourd. Mm -hmm. It has to be harvested when the stem is partially brown. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you outline a design that I've drawn on here. I've outlined it with the tip of my blade of my knife. Mm -hmm. And then today what I'll do is come back here and scrape off skin around the design. So it's sort of a, you remove the negative space, I guess you'd call it, like this. So eventually this whole gourd will look like this at the end of the day. It'll be and it takes you how many hours to do this? I think this gourd's going to take uh, maybe three hours. And do you find it relaxing, the scraping part? Um, yeah, it's very meditative. You actually go to the childhood part of your brain to do this. Um, many people have told me uh, how beneficial it is in a meditative way to, to carve gourds. And most, uh, many people, they get addicted to this. I call them, uh, I call them, I say that I've dipped them in the river gourd. Um, <laughs> one good story is uh, one lady I know has Parkinson's disease and she said she can hardly hold a cup of coffee because uh -huh. she shakes so much. But when she carves a gourd, the Parkinson goes away. The symptoms do. And, and she believes for this reason. Uh, Parkinson's is a disease that attacks established neural pathways. And when you're doing carving gourds, you're using a new part of your brain uh, and you're making new pathways. And so when she does gourds, it's a Parkinson, the, the symptoms disappear. And the effects last for hours afterwards where she won't be shaky after she carves a gourd. So obviously it stimulates us, you know, the, I believe it's the right brain. And, and you sort of go to a childhood place and childhood time. Time passes quicker. Um, uh, you know, it's really calming. It's, it's a very centering thing to do. Uh, let's see, I'm on the process. So what you do is you scrape off skin and leave skin on mm -hmm. in the pattern that you want. Mm -hmm. And um, then what you do is you put dye inside the gourd. Mm -hmm. What you have to do is open up the gourd and fill it full of dye. And what I teach people to do, what I first did, was uh, instant coffee is, makes a brown dye that's really good and easily available. And I've taught many, many people how to do this. And one way you can tell is because they all use coffee as their dye. You leave dye inside the gourd for about three weeks, and then you empty it out, and uh, the interior comes out. And uh, it's the, the dark side of the art is it's really stinky. It smells like a baby diaper, literally. But you dump out the interior, and then you scrape off the skin you've left on the gourd. Mm -hmm. And it will be dyed underneath it, if you're mm -hmm. lucky. And the way the process works is similar to that of a uh, carnation that's been cut, put in colored water. By capillary action, the gourd, the, inter the dye inside the gourd will be drawn to the exterior of the gourd. And this capillary action that accounts for that. So this is nearly finished. I have to do a little bit more design on it. And then I'll put dye in the, in the interior of the gourd. Now you said before that Mother Nature is your paintbrush. What do you mean by that? Well, let's get some pretty gourds out. A good example of this gourd here. Uh, I was going to try for one yellow hibiscus and four red ones. And this is what I expected. But as it turns out, this one dyed a little more mottled. And then these two red ones dyed completely different than uh, the one on the other side. I have no idea how come they bordered themselves. But that's um, part of the nature of this art. Why is it addicting? Because it's gambling, essentially. Uh -huh. uh, there's, you get a lot of failures in this art. Mm -hmm. One thing I stress to my students is uh, that you're going to have a, even I have a failure rate of maybe 10 or 15 percent. 
I think we have a chicken coming over to see us. It's Probably a little scary. True. A failure rate of 10 to 15 percent. Can you show me what it looks like? Well, your failure? Well, take a look over here. Okay. This I call the Trail of Tears. Uh -huh. And uh, some of these gourds had no work, some had some work, but all of them failed for one reason or another. So what I teach my students is to throw it out the back door and get another gourd. The first two things I teach students are this, is grow gourds if you want to do this, and, and persist. Uh, you have to really persist beyond failure. Um, I teach them in the class that uh, it's better to do something poorly at first if you really want to do something. Because if you want to be perfect right off the bat, you won't really learn how to do it. Well, one thing that's really interesting about this medium of art is if you look really closely at this leaf, mm -hmm. down to the capillary level, you'll see that it's, uh, you know, incredibly detailed. Almost all the things that humans do, if you look closely with a microscope or something, they'll break down into random dots, uh, dabs of paint, pixels on a computer, and so on. But because the capillaries are my paintbrush in this case, I let the capillaries do the painting. And so with this particular art medium, the closer you look, the more detailed it gets. If you pull out a microscope or a magnifying glass and look at this leaf, it'll look more and more just exactly like a real leaf. The most interesting, the greatest enjoyment I get out of this work is, even though this is beautiful, I can't take full credit for it because I have the cooperation of Mother Nature. To me, it's like this. I have, I, I do this carving on a gourd, mm -hmm. and then at night, a uh, 19th century impressionist painter sneaks in and paints them for me, and I get to take credit for it. So here are some of the gourds, both um, more traditional gourd designs and then also more contemporary designs. And there's just a tremendous variety of gourds available here. Old wine, there are a lot of wines lived here. Um, Captain Cook estimated 80,000 people. And the question is, where do they get their water uh, during droughts? And the answer is, is that they have gourds. And with these gourds, they could put them in the back of caves where water would drip. And the island is, you know, saturated with lava tubes where water drips. And without gourds, they couldn't have collected that water or survived on this side during times of drought. Another clever thing they did to get water this gourd here is a water bottle gourd, indigenous sea. And what wines would do that live near shore is that punch a hole in this end as well as this end, plug them both up, and dive into the ocean near shore where there are underwater freshwater springs. And what they would do is they'd swim down over a hole of fresh water. And you can feel it because it's cold and it sort of shivers. Yeah, I felt that before. And you uh, pull out the bottom plug, stick it over the hole, pull the top plug, the air leaves, sucks up fresh water underneath the ocean. Before I started doing this, I had a business down at uh, what is called OTEC, or the, the Natural Energy Laboratory. And my particular business was that I grew shiitake and other exotic mushrooms. And I used cold ocean water as an air conditioning product, so I can create the conditions that mushrooms prefer down there in the desert. In a way, it was another unique job because I was probably the world's only desert mushroom farmer. So you went from being the world's only desert mushroom farmer to the world's only... To the world's first contemporary artist of using the Meet Me How method of gourd decorating. We might be the only gourd shop in, in the United States, as far as I know, that is dedicated to the sale of, you know, gourds decorated in one method or another. Um, so to get in this business was a tremendous leap because no one had ever heard of these gourds, nobody was doing them, no one had ever seen them. I wasn't necessarily a trained artist by any means, and I didn't even know if there was a market for them. But uh, one day my eyes, when my other business was closing, uh, she asked me what I was going to do, and I passed this little shop. And I said that my dream was to get that shop, make it into a gourd shop, and start seeing if I could sell these gourds. And uh, so far, I've managed to hold my own by you know, selling these gourds here. And uh, so that's really affirmative. I, you know, truly, I was an artist that found my medium. I, I didn't know I was an artist. I found the medium before I found the artist in me.